All right. Um, okay, so uh, I know a lot of you guys have uh, already uh, tackled this problem in the homework, but, uh, but the very last problem in the homework is about coordinate descent. And so I thought I would take uh, today's lecture to talk about uh, the coordinate descent algorithm and, uh, and just kind of do a, a little demonstration of it. Um, but uh, well, here, let me just kind of just recap what we've covered so far and, uh, and what we've done. So um, uh, when we started talking about numeric methods, we first started talking about uh, root finding, right? So just a kind of a recap. And the numeric method. So we we started with root finding, which is find where f of x equals zero, right? And we had a we had a bunch of these things, and then we uh, we turned this into uh, optimization, which is find local mins and maxes. local min and max of a function, and to do that, all we have to do is just use root finding on the derivative. So you find where the derivative equals zero, that will be a local min or local max, okay? And then we also, um, we had uh, numeric derivative approximation. So uh, so that worked, okay? Uh, and today we'll um, continue on optimization, but we will look at multi-dimensional problems, okay? So this optimi optimization stuff has all been for unidimensional optimization, and so today we'll look at multi-dimensional optimization. And this will be um, coordinate descent. Okay. Um, if you, uh, there's other multi-dimensional optimization methods and probably the most commonly used one is gradient descent. And, and if you uh, are enrolled in 102B, uh, with me either next quarter or if you'll take it next year or whenever you guys if you decide to take it we will cover gradient descent in uh, in 102b okay but uh, as far as this class goes for multi-dimensional optimization we um, we cover coordinate descent okay and and the basic idea of coordinate descent is um, take a multi-dimensional function a function of several variables, or at least more than one variable, multi-dimensional function, and then hold all but one variable constant. Okay, and if you do that, the multi-dimensional function becomes a unidimensional function. If, if everything is held constant, then it becomes just a function of one variable. Okay, if all, all but one variable is held constant, um, the function becomes a unidimensional function. I'll just say it becomes unidimensional. And then um, we can optimize the unidimensional function with one of our other methods. And so, um, so you have uh, 
this as a, an exercise in your homework, and I thought we could do something like this in, uh, in class today. And so um, let me just kind of draw what, what I'm going to attempt to do. Um, so I'm going to get some function, g of x and y, and this function is x squared minus 2x minus 5, 1 half xy, x squared minus 2x minus 1 half xy plus 2 and a half y squared. Okay, and so because uh, you know we just have second order terms here, um, this becomes just a um, this is a paraboloid. It's basically this bowl-like shape. All right, maybe I should have drawn it the other way. Oh dear. That's not what I wanted. Um, it's kind of hard to draw this stuff. All right, so I've got this kind of bowl uh, shape here, and um, so we'll say this is y, and this is x. And this is z, okay? And so this is uh, this is what we have in uh, um, a function of two dimensions. So you know we plot it as three dimensions, okay? Z being kind of g of x and y. Um, and so this is this is what we have. And what we're going to do is you know we just start at some arbitrary coordinate. x0, y0, okay? And then we, um, we hold uh, one of those variables. Um, maybe, I forget which one I did. We'll hold y constant, okay? Hold, um, it doesn't matter what, which variable will you do, but you hold y constant and the variable uh, and the function g of y, sorry, the function g of x and y, given that y is equal to some value y0, just becomes a function of, of x, okay? So I think um, in my first iteration, my x0, y0, starts off at uh, negative 1, 1 1.5. Okay. And so this is kind of just, we're going to say, let's hold y constant at uh, 1.5. y equals 1.5. This is going to be right here. And, and basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this, and I'm going to just take a plane and just draw a plane through this um, paraboloid, okay? And it's going to cut so when we cut the bowl it, uh, you know, you've got imagine this bowl shape and you're just going to take a kind of a sword and just slice straight down, okay? And so when you look at the shape that it cuts through the bowl, it's going to be this parabola shape, okay? And so that's what we have. So we hold y constant at y equals 1.5, and, um, and we get a parabola here, okay? So our function is going to be g of x and y, but we're going to hold y equal to 1.5. So this becomes x squared minus 2x minus... Uh, one half x times one point five plus two point five times one point five squared. So everywhere we, we see a y, we just plug in one point five, and this simplifies down to 
to x squared minus 2x minus 0.75x plus, what is that, 2.5 times 1.5 squared is 5.625. Okay, so I get g of x. Now that <coughs> we've held y constant, this becomes just a function of x. I get x squared minus 2.75x plus 5.625, okay? And what we want to do is we want to find what is the minimum of this function. So this is going to just be, now that I've got this parabola right here, what's the minimum of the, of the parabola? Okay, I've got this function of x. We just want what is the minimum here, right? Okay, so uh, if we have calculus, with calculus, To minimize g of x, what do we do? We'll solve for g prime of x equal to 0. So we're going to say g prime of x is what? 2x minus 2.75. We'll set that equal to 0. We solve for x. We get x is equal to 2.75 divided by 2. x is equal to one point. 375. All right. So um, when y is equal to 1.5, the x that minimizes the function is x equal to 1.375. Is that all right? So again, we start off with a two-dimensional function. When we hold one of our variables constant, then it just it's like making a slice through the, uh, the three-dimensional shape, and you just get this parabola. And now that we have this, okay, we update our coordinate. And we have x1 equal to 1.375, and then we search for y, okay? So um, now we hold x constant, okay? So g of x and y, holding x to be 1.375, so we're going to have what is what was our thing? X squared minus two x minus one half x y plus two and a half y squared. So we're going to get um, one point three seven five squared minus two times one point three seven five minus one half times one point three seven five times y plus two and a half y squared. Okay, so we get 2 and a half y squared. So this is g of g of y now. 2 and a half y squared uh, minus 1.375 divided by 2 uh, 0 0.6875 plus something. Okay. And then we want to solve for um, the y that minimizes this. Okay, and so g prime of y will equal 5y minus 0 0.6875. We set that equal to 0, and we get y is equal to 0 0.6875 divided by 5, and we get 0 0.13. 7, 5. Okay? Um, so this, you know, I've been using calculus, so we can use calculus to minimize the function, but of course, to minimize our univariate functions. Uh, or if we have the computer do this, we could just have it use one of our 
optimization methods, right? So um, we'll do something like, you know, golden search on, you know, on the function with kind of a lower and upper, upper limit there, okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, our picture here this time So earlier, um, we found the minimum, you know, we drew the slice this way. This time, now that we found the minimum there, you know, our, our kind of our, our minimum is right here on this surface. Um, now that we've done that, we're going to draw kind of a, a new slice. Um, through the, the thing and and that's gonna I don't know how to draw this <coughs> it's gonna look like this on the bowl okay and uh, and now we want to find the value that minimizes this thing okay so we started here we're gonna draw a slice through there and then we want to find this okay and then we'll just keep iterating back and forth, um, holding uh, the other variables constant and it uh, and looking for the minimum there. And then once we find the minimum, we'll hold that value constant and we'll look in the other direction. Question? Yeah, so we're, if we're taking a slice and we're minimizing that parabola, uh -huh. then if we minimize the x value on that slice, yeah. it's you know, perpendicular to the y-axis. Like, why would the x change? Uh, so, so if the parabola paraboloid is set up where its major and minor axes are parallel to the x and y axis, then yes, what, you, what you're saying is true. But um, uh, so, so if um, if the top down like if your contour plot like if the x and y axis looks like this and your contour plot looks like this, where kind of the major axis, I mean the minor and major axes of the paraboloid look like this, or the ellipse, ellipses look like that, then yeah, you would only have to iterate twice, okay? But sometimes you don't have that, and you'll have um, paraboloids that, that, are, that are like this, okay? And the, I think I gave you, gave you an example like this in the homework where you'll start here, and when you minimize, you'll find here, and then you minimize in this direction, and you end up here, and then you'll have to go in this direction, and you'll go there, and then you'll go in this direction, and you go there, so on and so forth. And you're going to get kind of this um, stair step pattern in your um, homework solution. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, instead of having you try to visualize this thing with my bad diagrams, um, I can use the, uh, the computer to assist me in drawing these three-dimensional things. Um, and I'm going to use this package Plotly, okay, which is uh, it's pretty neat. We didn't cover it in class, um, but uh, um, it works. There's some similarities with ggplot, but also differences. It also works. Uh, it's been coded up for Python and R and stuff, and you can learn about it. It's, it's pretty new. I hardly know how to use it at all. So, um, so, so everything I'm doing is just, it's not very good. But, I mean, we get some pretty charts out of it. So, so here we go. OK, so I'm loading up a golden section search. This is the same code that's in your homework that implements the golden section search algorithm to kind of optimize a unidimensional function. Okay. And so here I'm going to start off with g. Okay, g is this uh, two-dimensional function. It's what I've written in the examples so far in today's lecture: x squared minus two x minus one half xy 
plus 2.5 y squared, okay? And to get this uh, to work, I'm going to create these vectors x and y. And um, you know what? Before I begin, I should just delete everything out. Okay, so we'll load this up. Okay, and I use um, the outer function. Okay, so so x is a vector that basically starts at negative 1.5, counts up by 0.5 to get 0.05 to get up to 2. Okay, so it goes negative 1.5, negative 1.45, so on and so forth. Y is the exact same vector. Okay, you can see that the command to create x and y are the same. And then, um, and what z does is it does an outer which says take the vector and put it on one end, edge of a matrix, take the other vector, put it on the other edge of a matrix, and you'll get this big matrix. And to fill in the values of that matrix, apply the function g. So when I do this, um, and if we look at kind of the uh, first value of z, it gives me 9.75. What that is is um, x is negative 1.5, and y is negative 1.5, and it would be what I would get if I plug in negative 1.5 for x and negative 1.5 for y into g, and that gives me 9.75, okay? And so you can kind of see, you know, the um, first five rows and first five columns of z, so we have kind of these values, and, and this value, 9.54, is what I would get when I plug in, I think, um, uh, one point negative one point four five for x and negative one point five for y. Okay, and then and going down over here to get nine point four one eight seven five, that would be negative one point five for x and negative one point four five for y. Okay, so over here as we're changing our values, you know, of uh, x and y, we get you know kind of this is what the function would be if we used um, you know, any any one of these things. So it kind of gives the the value of the function if we used kind of any of these coordinates here. So this gives me a, a big matrix. Z is going to be um, a 71 by 71 matrix. And it's enough to kind of create a, a smooth surface here. So I just call plotly and I say make a surface plot of this, okay? And I throw that into P, okay? And, uh, and <laughs> Last class, I couldn't figure out the color scale, so I had the default color scheme, which uh, was difficult to see on the projector up here. But, um, but here, um, now you can see kind of, this is uh, only part of the paraboloid, but, but we do have the, the bottom of the bowl here and you know, the paraboloid as it climbs up. So you can kind of see, you know, we have these ellipses line up, and you can kind of see these the kind of the parabolic shape uh, along the bottom, and in this way you, you can also see the parabolic shape as it goes like this, right? And so this is um, this is what we have, and basically, you know, in I think in your homework you have just the contour plots, which are just these the ovals at different heights, right? And what we want to find is the very bottom of the uh, parabola this bowl, which is going to be somewhere around here, okay, because up here these are just, that's, that's not the bottom. So we want to find, we want to find the, the minimum, which is going to be somewhere down here. Okay, so um, we're going to just start off at some arbitrary starting point, um, which I've chosen to just arbitrarily be negative 1 and 1 1.5 for x and y, and I'm going to use the plotly command to, uh, to add a marker. And we do that, and um, okay, it's spitting out all of these warnings here, but but that's fine. Um, here, here is uh, this is where that location is, and it's, uh, it's kind of hard to rotate these things, but you know I've got this little, basically a little ball, kind of somewhere in this. Um, I don't know, on this surface here, okay? And so this is, this this location right here is at x, 
x being uh, negative 1 and y being 1.5, okay? So what we're going to do is we want to trace out, we say, okay, uh, at this location, we're going to uh, hold a y constant at 1.5, and that will trace out kind of a, a value. So here's y, and we're going to hold y constant at 1.5, and, um, and we'll get a, a unidimensional function. So here I've redefined it. I've defined a new function called g iteration one. I don't recommend it that you do it this way in your uh, in your code, where I'm redefining a new function at every single step. But you will need to, because the c function that's given to you in your um, homework is two dimensional, and you do need to define functions of one dimension, right? So so here we're going to say um, g uh, at iteration one is going to basically be the function x squared minus 2x minus 0.5xy plus 2.5y squared. But here I'm just setting y equal to 1.5. So that's going to plug in that value here, and it's going to take in whatever values of x that I provide to it. Okay, And so now I'm going to add a trace. And the trace will be uh, basically a line where I'm going to say x is x. Again, x, the original vector of x is the value is negative 1.5 to 2, spaced out um, nice and even. And then, um, and for y, I'm going to just repeat the value 1.5 71 times. And then the value that I'm going to plot is going to be the value that g spits out when I plug in my different values of x. OK, so I'll go ahead and do that. And I think this line shows up. <coughs> shows up here, okay? So here is holding y constant. This is the line that um, that it spits out. Okay, so this is a unidimensional function. Okay, right along here. Okay, so this is what we get, and we're gonna just try to find what is the minimum of this uh, parabola right here. So it looks like it's going to be somewhere around here. That's going to be kind of the, uh, the value that minimizes this parabola here. Okay, So it's just a single, a unidimensional function, this, uh, this line here. And we're going to find the minimum. And even if we find the minimum here, that's going to be quite different from the actual minimum. right? So the actual minimum is way down here. and. Uh, and we might not get that. So here I'm going to just use golden section search. Okay, And when I do that, it tells me that the value that minimizes it is 1.375, which aligns with what we got when we did the calculus. We said when we do calculus, we, we know that this value is minimized at 1.375. Here we just had um, R do golden section search, and it gives us the minimum 1.375. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a marker along this line where y is 1.5, but now my x is not negative 1, but it's 1.375. So I'm going to go ahead and add a marker there. And um, did apply. OK, so here, this is the, uh, when we look at the parabola, this is the bottom of the parabola right there. Let me kind of turn off, turn that off. So this is going to be the, the bottom of the parabola right there, or you know, from this, this perspective. So this is the lowest I can get. I can't get any lower anywhere else on the uh, on the graph there. Okay, so now that I have x equal to 1.375, I'm gonna hold x constant. And I'm going to run a line where x is equal to 1.375, and uh, and we're going to um, minimize that function there. Okay. So I've defined a new function called g at iteration 1b. This is part b of our first iteration. It's a function of y. I plug in x equal to 1.375. We're going to plug in our different values of y and get different values of that. 
and I'll go ahead um, and using holding x constant, repeating 1.375 71 times, we're going to plug in our different values of y, and we're going to plug in kind of what that g spits out. And um, maybe I don't pink probably won't show up very well. Let me uh, let me change my color to like purple. Okay, and so this is what we had earlier. This was the, the mi minimum value here, and now that we found this minimum value, we run a union dimensional function through there, okay? And so now we got another parabola, okay? And we want to find what is the, uh, the bottom of this parabola, okay? And that's going to be somewhere around here, okay? Um, you know, just looking at it this way, we just want to we just want to find the bottom bottom of this this thing here okay so we're gonna go um, and just like before we will run golden section search just to find the value there and it says the value that minimizes that is 0 0.1375 okay which is exactly um, what we found when we did our calculus we said okay now that we know x is 1.375 we'll go ahead and hold x constant, we plugged that in, we solved for it, and we get y is equal to 0 0.1375, okay? So then I'll go ahead and I'll add a marker there. And, um, you know, my computer's struggling to keep drawing these 3D uh, graphs here. But, um, but there we go, okay? So, so here it says, okay, here is the, the line that you gave me. And this is the bottom of the line there. Okay, so we're gonna Okay. So right there, that's the bottom. If we look at it from this side, okay, we can see that it's close to like the actual bottom, but it's not quite there. It's not quite at the the absolute minimum of the uh, uh, of the parabola. Okay, so we can see the Probably the absolute minimum is somewhere around here, and we're we're a little bit off from that. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're we found the kind of the the bottom of the um, the thing. So we'll we'll just repeat. And so we're gonna hold y constant. I've created a new function called g iteration two, and uh, and again, when you do your homework, you should probably find a slightly better way to do this. But I'm just going to set y equal to the value of 0.1375 and have it return back our thing. We're going to add a trace. Um, and maybe I'll do dark green or something. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and I'll just solve for the, uh, the minimum, minimum value there. And we'll go ahead and just kind of plot that out. Okay, and so um, so when we run a uh, the shape through, starting at this kind of purple line here, we get this green line, and then uh, and if we look at kind of the side profile of the green line, it turns out that the value that minimizes that green line is going to be right here, which um, you know is pretty close to. Uh, the minimum of the actual paraboloid, and we probably have to do a few more iterations to get truly to the actual bottom of the um, of the thing. Okay, but um, but I would say this is uh, this is pretty good, and uh, you know I've only done this thing. I only did like three like half iterations. Okay, like one and a half full iterations. Of this, just because it's um, some, um, it's a lot of work to just kind of create the graph, and um, and my computer is really struggling to uh, um, to produce these three D plots here. But it is kind of neat, uh, I think, to uh, to to illustrate this, and um, and I hope this gives you an idea of what's happening as far as coordinate descent goes. Now, of course, 
In real life, we would not bother with drawing the 3D graphs and, uh, and doing this. We would just iterate through each of these things and we'd just say, okay, minimize it with respect to X, then minimize with respect to Y, minimize with respect to X, minimize with respect to Y, and just do this and it's uh, not bothering graphing anything and it's gonna just find these values and it's gonna work very quickly. I think for your homework, I have you guys run through the algorithm um, keeping track of your locations and then you add the plot uh, add the segments to the contour plot okay so rather than bothering with this 3d thing you know you're just drawing it you've got these ovals from the contour plot okay and uh, and you're just going to graph basically the segments um, onto your contour plot uh, and that should still uh, should still work um, and this coordinate descent stuff, it can apply to um, higher dimensional functions. You can have a function of, let's say, five variables, A, B, C, D, and E. And in the first iteration, you'd hold everything except A constant. So you'd hold B, C, D, and E constant, and then it becomes just a function of A. And then once you have a value of A that minimizes that function, you hold A constant, you still hold C, D, and E constant, and you allow just variable b to vary, okay? And so it becomes a function of b. You find a value of b that minimizes it. Now you hold a and b constant. You let c vary. You hold d and e constant. Um, and then you find the value of c that minimizes. And you, you go through each uh, variable one at a time, uh, finding each value that, uh, that minimizes the, uh, the function. So that's, uh, so that's gonna be coordinate descent. It's, uh, it's pretty useful. Um, and, uh, and I think that's about all we want to uh, cover as far as optimization methods go uh, in this class, okay? So, so we've covered some stuff, uh, and then probably on Friday um, I will start covering um, some permutation and randomization tests and things like that. Um, so just a reminder, you guys, I, I have to cancel my 1 p.m. lecture on Friday, okay? So um, no attendance will be taken that day or anything like that. Um, uh, so um, I will have my noon lecture on Friday, okay? So I have my noon lecture on Friday. I just have to cancel my 1 p.m. lecture because of a meeting I've got. Um, so I'll record my noon lecture. Um, please just make sure you watch the video uh, for the, uh, the content that's covered in the noon lecture on Friday, okay? Um, with that, we'll, uh, we'll end a little bit early today, and um, I will see you guys on Monday, okay? Um, but please watch my uh, Friday video that I record from noon, okay? So, uh, so we'll have, uh, have a good weekend, you guys. We'll, we'll see you later.